Welcome to this video where we would give you a thousand feet overview of the Spring Framework. Question at the back of your mind always is what is Spring Framework? Let's answer that and also look at some of the most important terminologies which are related to Spring Framework in this video. The typical answer and I would think one of the most perfect answers to give is Spring is a dependency injection framework. Now, this leads to a next question, right? Yeah, what is dependency injection? And obviously, this leads to the next question. What is a dependency? Let's look at each one of them step by step. Okay, let's focus on what is a dependency. If you have experienced developing web applications before, then you would understand that this is the structure in which we develop web applications. You have typically a web layer, a business layer, and a data layer. The web layer is typically concerned with the UI of the application. How do you show stuff to the user? The business logic is present inside your business layer. And the data layer takes care of talking to the external interfaces as well as your database. If business layer needs some data, it calls some class which is present inside the data layer. So the business layer is dependent on the data layer. If you want to show something on the UI or if you want to save some data from the user to the database, the web layer first calls business layer. So the web layer is dependent on some class which is present inside the business layer. This is how we build web applications. The web layer is dependent on business layer and the business layer is dependent on the data layer. Let's go one step deeper and consider an example. Let's say you're writing some class complex business service. This has a lot of complex business logic. One of the things you would want to do is to sort a set of numbers. You know what sorting is, right? So whatever is not in order, let's say the input is 10, 3, 4, you'd want to put them in order. 3, 4, 10. The complex business service class uses the sort algorithm to be able to sort the numbers. The complex business service class depends on the sort algorithm. The sort algorithm is a dependency of the complex business service. The concept of dependency is very simple. What does complex business service need to be able to provide its service? It needs a sort algorithm. A dependency of a class is basically what are all the things it needs to be able to perform its functionality. This might look a very simple example. But when we are talking about big applications, you are talking about thousands of classes. You are talking about different classes in different layers having multiple dependencies. So in a typical application, you will have a lot of classes with a lot of dependencies. Before Spring Framework, this is how we used to create dependencies. So the complex business service needs a sort algorithm. So what we are doing is we are using a bubble sort algorithm. You don't need to really worry about what bubble sort is and what are the other types of sorting. All that you would need to know is bubble sort is one of the algorithms. Let's say it's a class which is implementing the interface sort algorithm. The way complex business service creates an instance of the sort algorithm is by saying new bubble sort algorithm. Think about what is the problem with this kind of code. What would happen if I directly instantiate the dependency I would need? The complex business service is directly instantiating the bubble sort algorithm over here. What if you'd want the business service to use a different sorting algorithm? Let's say I would want complex business service to use a quick sort algorithm. I would need to modify this code with the new quick sort algorithm. This kind of code where the complex business service 
is directly instantiating a specific dependency. Here complex business service is instantiating, is creating an instance of bubble sort algorithm. This is called tight coupling. Complex business service is tightly coupled with the bubble sort algorithm. Tight coupling is not considered to be good. Good code has loose coupling. How do we make this code loosely coupled? The way we would remove tight coupling is by removing the instantiation. You can see that over here we are commenting out the instantiation. We are not creating an instance of the sort algorithm directly in here. What we are doing is we are creating a constructor. Whoever wants to make use of the complex business service can provide what sort algorithm they can use. Now, how does this really help? Whoever wants to use the business service can instantiate the sort algorithm they would want to use and create a complex business service passing the sort algorithm to it. If you don't want to use the bubble sort algorithm, you can create a different sort algorithm and replace it in here. This code is good because this is loosely coupled programming. The complex business service is not dependent on a specific sort algorithm. You can provide it with any sort algorithm and it can use it. However, this results in an important question. Who does this? Where do you write this logic? Think about what this code is doing. It is creating a new instance of the bubble sort algorithm. It is creating a new instance of the complex business service after populating the right dependencies. So all that it's doing is creating objects and populating dependencies. This is where the spring framework comes in. The spring framework does exactly the job you are seeing in the code here. It instantiates objects and populates the dependencies. However, it is your job as a programmer to tell Spring Framework what are the objects it would need to manage and what are the dependencies of each class. What do I mean? The questions are, how does Spring know that it needs to create an instance of the bubble sort algorithm? How does Spring know that it needs to create an instance of the complex business service and populate the instance it created earlier of the bubble sort algorithm? So the question is basically, how does Spring know to do this? Given this code, Spring needs to be able to do this. How does Spring framework do this magic? The thing is, you as a programmer need to help Spring Framework identify what are the objects it needs to manage and what are its dependencies. There are two important annotations that are present using which you can tell the Spring Framework what are the objects it needs to manage and what are the dependencies of a particular class. The first annotation is at component. We are putting an at component on top of the complex business service and the bubble sort algorithm. This is where we are telling Spring, okay, you need to start managing instances of the complex business service and the bubble sort algorithm. Now, Spring knows it needs to manage the instances of these two classes. But how do you tell that this sort algorithm is a dependency of the complex business service. The way you would do that is by using another annotation at auto wired. So as soon as you put an at component, it means that Spring starts managing instances of that class. Spring would create the instances of that class for you. And as soon as you put at auto wired, that means Spring would start looking for this dependency. It would start looking among the components it manages, among the instances of the classes it manages, 
to find a matching thing for this sort algorithm. So Spring would internally do this. It would create an instance of the bubble sort algorithm and it would pass it to the constructor of the complex business service to create an instance of the complex business service. If you are a beginner to Spring Framework and this is the first time you are looking at at component and at auto wired, I would recommend you to redo the last 10 minutes again. So what does Spring Framework do? Core logic of the Spring Framework is dependency injection. The Spring Framework understands the different annotations that you are putting on top of your classes. It knows that you'd want to create an instance of this class, you'd want to create an instance of this class, and you'd want Spring Framework to manage it. It also understands that the sort algorithm is a dependency of the complex business service. It would make sure that the instances of all the objects it manages are created with the dependencies properly populated. Given this background, let's quickly look at some of the important terminology related to the Spring Framework. What you are looking on the screen are a few terminology which are frequently associated with Spring Framework. Let's look at them one by one. The first terminology is beans. Over here, we are telling Spring to manage instances of the complex business service and the bubble sort algorithm. These instances that Spring manages are called beans. Beans are the different objects that are managed by the Spring Framework. What is auto wiring? The process where Spring identifies the dependencies, identifies the matches for the dependencies and populates them. That process is called auto wiring. So basically Spring finds the right sort algorithm. It finds the bubble sort algorithm and creates an instance of the complex business service by populating the right sort algorithm. This is what is called auto wiring. We already talked about dependency injection. At a high level, whatever is happening here is dependency injection. We are injecting the sort algorithm as a dependency into the complex business service bean. One of the things you would have already started noticing is that all these terminology are really related to each other and are really simple. Inversion of control. What is inversion of control? When we started off this example, we were writing this code. Who is creating the instance of the bubble sort algorithm here? The class which needs it. So the class which needs the dependency creates an instance of the dependency. Who is creating the instance of the dependency in this example? The Spring Framework is creating the instance in here. We are taking the control from the class that needs the dependency and giving the control to the framework, to the Spring Framework. And this is called inversion of control. And that leads us nicely into the next terminology, IOC container. It stands for inversion of control container. IOC container is a generic terminology to represent anything that is implementing inversion of control. In the case of Spring Framework, the typical IOC container is the application context. Later, we would also talk about Bean Factory, but let's say for now, the most important IOC container as far as Spring Framework is concerned is the application context. So the application context is the one where all the beans are created and managed. Application context is the most important part of the Spring Framework. That's where all the core logic of Spring Framework happens. The idea behind this video is to give you a big picture, a 10,000 feet view of the important concepts in the Spring Framework. 
one of the things that you would see in the next section is we would repeat these concepts again. As a beginner to Spring Framework, you'd need to understand these concepts perfectly. And that's what we would help you to do by repeating the concept in the subsequent few steps. Wow! This was really a long video where we introduced the Spring Framework to you. At the core, Spring is a dependency injection framework. And we also looked at all the important terminologies that are associated with the Spring Framework. From the next step, let's get our hands dirty and start practicing whatever we looked at in this step. I can promise you that the next few videos will be a lot shorter than this specific video. Thanks for your patience and I'll see you in the next step.